The popularity of the Arthurian romances was undiminished at the end of the Middle Ages. When William Caxton opened the first print shop in Westminster, one of his first publications was an edition of Mallory's Mort d'Arthur, which he printed in 1485. It would be printed again in 1498, 1529, 1557, 1582 and 1634. Writing of the continued popularity of medieval romances for Shakespeare's audience, Helen Cooper says that they grew up with narrative romances, many of the medieval ones available in cheap printed editions that came to form the bulk of early Tudor popular reading, the pulp fiction of the age. Some 70 medieval romances were still current after 1500, either in print or through retellings that kept their story familiar. The Tudor government's use of the Arthurian ideal of a unified England to support their own dynastic claims meant that the stories from medieval romances had considerable cultural prestige throughout the 16th century. When Edmund Spencer set out to write an epic poem in English, the Arthurian romance provided him with characters like Prince Arthur, plot devices and settings. The Fairy Queen, printed in 1590 in three books and in six books in 1596, ended up a curious hybrid an epic romance that combined the storytelling techniques of romance with the elevated tone and public themes of epic. New prose romances were also being written, many of them based on stories told in medieval romances. Robert Greene's romance Pandosto, which was Shakespeare's source for The Winter's Tale, may have had its source in turn in The Clark's Tale from Chaucer's Canterbury Tales. Thomas Lodge's romance Rosalind was based on the medieval romance Gamelin, and it then became the source for Shakespeare's As You Like It. But there was another important influence on romance that was new at the Renaissance, and this was a series of ancient Greek narratives about love and adventure that are now commonly called Hellenistic romances or Hellenistic novels. These stories told of a virtuous heroine and a valiant youth who were separated from each other by a series of unfortunate events. These events range from the frivolous, like quarrels, to the life-threatening, like kidnappings and shipwrecks. By the end of the story, the couple are reunited. Five of these Hellenistic romances survived to the Renaissance, and they acted as a model for a new style of prose fiction. One, Longus's Daphnis and Chloe, for example, was sometimes called the pastoral story because of its setting. It was set in the countryside, and many of the characters were shepherds. This pastoral setting proved hugely popular in the 16th century and it became a very important feature of Renaissance romances, with characters leaving human society for the simpler life of the countryside and there they find a resolution to their problems. We see this in Shakespeare's The Winter's Tale and in As You Like It. It was also a motif chosen by Sir Philip Sidney for his prose romance Arcadia, printed in 1593. The Arcadia was one of the most popular and important works of Elizabethan prose fiction. It was the first pastoral romance in Europe since Longus's Daphnis and Chloe, and the example was widely imitated in English and in other languages. For Renaissance writers, the ancient romances had much the same appeal as the medieval romances. These were stories of adventure focused around a loving but thwarted couple. They also brought in a large cast of characters to the romance. They included brigands and shepherds, for example. Plot devices in the ancient romances did not necessarily invoke the supernatural, but they often strained credibility. Coincidences, extraordinarily bad luck and extraordinarily good luck, feature prominently in the plots. These romances, based on the ancient Greek model, are often lighter in tone than romances based on medieval stories. This is particularly true of romances that have a pastoral setting. But this did not mean that weighted themes about the nature of virtue or kinship that we find in Mallory are not also found in Renaissance romance. Both Sidney and Shakespeare use the pastoral mode and romance themes to present serious questions about duty, loyalty, family and faith. But they all obeyed the rules of this genre and they guaranteed their heroes and heroines a happy ending.